So should we try this time where you don't stop? Don't stop. We're going to try and be continuous. The drone, the drone. And then we'll pass out. <laughs> and we keep dancing. <laughs> yeah. Let's just try the sun just standing. Standing. Mokhe son si neb son si neb. Mama li mokha sa. Son si neb sa sa ik seba. Mama li mokha sa. Hara le da. Mama li mokha sa. Hara le da. Mama li mokha sa. So Voices of the Ancestors is a theatre show. And it's telling the story of Georgian songs, songs from Georgia, and how they came to the UK and why British people love to sing them. There's something about these songs that just catches you. For some people, when they hear these songs, and it certainly happened for me, uh, it's some kind of inner change happens. Um, and you're so physically moved by these songs that you have to keep singing them and then you have to find, of course, other people to sing them with because they're all about the harmony, so you can't sing them alone. So in the tea break, I went and asked Edisha for some help with the song and it was a measure of how encouraging and what a good teacher he was that next minute I found myself singing a part on my own with him singing another part and he summons another chap and he sang this beautiful church song and I fell in love. With, with, the, with the songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pregnant pause, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. My first touch with Georgian songs was actually in a theatre environment. Um, I was in Poland and I was training with a theatre company and we were learning songs from all over the place, like Greece and Ukraine. Um, and, and we learned Ashochella, which is a Georgian song, and that just caught me more than any of the others. And I just thought, I have to go to this country and meet the people who sing this music. And then that's what I did. That actually um, led me onto a research project about Georgian songs, um, which was actually the basis for this theatre show. So it was research and practice. Um, and my research question was about um, Georgian polyphonic songs and gender constructs and how both of those things relate to the concept of play, like playing games in theatre. I guess the thing that actors can do <laughs> is, <laughs> is like get energy from a new situation and do it over and over again and keep that energy. Yes. And I think that's what we're fi like, when we do something yeah. for the first time, we have it because it, yeah. it's genuinely kind of new. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a struggle to then do that again, Without pretending it that it's we're not just there. Yeah. And that, I guess that's, yeah, because we haven't learned how to do yeah. that. Yeah, I can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, it looks like they can. Yeah, but like, <laughs> it's the same with clowning. Like, it's really funny the first time and then you're like, try to play it again and every time you play it, it it dies a little bit more and you're right the secret of clowning or acting or whatever it's like how to get that spark of the first time without everything being improvised <laughs> yeah. Yeah. which has a certain scariness yeah I was at drama school and my dissertation in my third year was a 20 minute performance of uh, Georgian songs in this kind of experimental way whilst playing games on stage um, and so we've kind of taken a bit of that um, into this production you'll see that we're playing games on stage while singing the songs so there were two things that happened um, I created this 20 minute performance and it was very much like an academic exercise um, and it was beautiful, you know, I, I loved the songs that we use and lots of people enjoyed it, but we didn't have a story to tell. We just had the songs and the research. Meanwhile, Susan, um, who I knew from Maspinzelli, she had this incredible story to tell about how the choir started and it all started with this man called Edisher and then the songs had come over with him and then passed on through his son Gigi and now they're being passed on through Magda and all of that is the story that we're trying to tell in the show. They had two children, Marika and Gigi. Marika was born 
And then she had a children's choir, a merry merry. They were a singing family, so they all sang together with the other children in a merry merry. So basically, every time Susan had to tell the story, which was quite a lot when we were in Georgia, everybody was asking, like, why? Why do you sing these songs? And every time she would go through the story and by the end we'd all be crying because it's quite a sad story. It's over in Georgia. Think he dies. Leaving Ilya and Magda. Alone, but with the songs. kind of had this feeling like there must be a better way to tell the story and a better way for more people to know about it and so that's when those two ideas came together like the theatre show and the story. So I've attempted a script so you'll all be happy to know. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Um, but as Danny Braverman says the end is process is not a script, the end process is the show. So this script is just one version of things. The show will be another thing. And the next time we do a show, the show, it'll be another thing. So this is just one version of what's gonna happen. It's been amazing to be back in a theatre. So this is the first show that I've worked on since the pandemic. And there's just this feeling of absolute privilege to be working in a theatre again and also to have uh, this great company <clears throat> of six singers and actors um, coming together to work on this show and giving up their time for it. Um, so all I can say is that I'm really excited about it. Is it worth just trying it, just doing our own story, like just in, the, in 20 seconds? Because like, we never really did that, did we? Like, just trying it in the end. And it will be fresh because you haven't been doing it, you've been doing mm-hmm. other things. But then part of that process that we did was telling other people's stories and what happens when it happens. I feel like I was waffle. The scene yeah, that's why really so I'm not I'm tempted to, to not mess with it. Yeah, it's like just it just worked really well. Okay, exactly. so yeah. it's fine. I hope people in the audience might be intrigued by the songs. And even if they're not, I think that they'll still get some of this um, flavour of um, in Georgian, it's called Urti Ertoba, this togetherness, this community or communion that's brought through the songs, um, and this feeling that we're connected to the earth when we sing them, and we're connected to something very ancient and very old. So maybe they'll be inter- interested to think about the songs of their ancestors. because it's got hardly any words. Apparently I do songs like that. So, I'm very happy. Like, this is what we all love to do. We all love to yeah. find songs between us when we're just hanging out. And I'm perfectly happy for that to happen in the show. I think Georgian songs and theatre, you know, this isn't the first time that they've been brought together. Um, it's been done before. And you can see why. Because they do have this very powerful effect straight away they're creating an atmosphere Um, and I know some shows just use the Georgian songs for the atmosphere and that's great Um, but what we're trying to do is you know the the show is actually about the songs so we're kind of foregrounding the songs and trying to tell the story through the songs rather than just having them as a kind of uh, like a background atmosphere.
is what got me into Georgian songs. I first heard that sound on a Kate Bush album, and it was actually the same day as 9-11 that I heard that song, and I just thought, what on earth is this? And I even recorded it so that I could ask my friend, and he said, oh, that's easy, that's Georgian singing. You could, you know, go and join the London Georgian choir, Maspindeli. And everyone else will remember that day because it was 9-11, but I'll remember it because it's the first time I heard a Georgian song. Mm -hmm. So, my first touch with Georgian singing, well, it was in Poland. I was with a theatre company and we'd be doing loads of singing and they said, oh, this afternoon we're going to do a Georgian workshop. And I thought, great, I love a bit of history. That'd be really interesting. Really don't know much about that. Mm -hmm. So, I went along on Honestly, these words they started singing in, and this crunchy three-part harmony. I just I clearly wasn't the wrong bit of history, but I learned there was a whole country called Georgia, and people there sang in this three-part harmony. And I just felt I wanted to go there and, and find out more. It was longer ago than I care to remember. I had two small children, and I was going to a singing workshop with a woman called Sally. And she brought all sorts of different songs to this workshop. I remember we did some Polynesian songs, a few songs from some countries in Africa. And then one day she turned up and she said, today I'm gonna to teach you a Georgian song called Asho Chela. I didn't know the song at all. I didn't know about Georgian singing at all. But we sang this song. And then from that moment on, I thought, I don't need to sing anything else. This is the music for me and it's been that way ever since. My first contact with Georgian singing was when I was a 12-year-old schoolgirl in Wales, and this, this um, choir came over from Georgia. It was, all, it was all small children, and they were teaching us songs, and we were singing with them, and that sound it was just extraordinary. I, f I felt it in my body. It was, it was like nothing else I had experienced before. And ever since then, I've had this growing desire to, to go to Georgia. So I was singing in the Bulgarian choir, and then we used to sing this song called Mraval Jamia. And to be honest, I didn't even realize it was a Georgian song to begin with. But then my friend Bernard in the choir, he actually leads the Georgian choir in London and um, he said oh it's Georgian and then as we were going home on the tube he would just teach me bits of these songs and then yeah that's how it started really. It was in the 1990s I went to a workshop in Norwich and a Georgian singing teacher had come over all the way from Georgia he didn't speak an awful lot of English and he was teaching us these songs in three parts really beautiful but he inspired us all and encouraged us all. And then in the interval, I wasn't quite sure about something, so I went up and asked him, did I say that his name was Edisha? Edisha Garriganitse? Anyway, I asked him, I'm not sure about this, and he said, well, just let's sing it together. I sang one part, he sang one part, and somebody else sang another part, and suddenly the three of us were doing it, and I fell in love. The pronunciation here, uh, it's written down uh, by Chiyosh. It's a bit uh, area, and here I have all of the consonants notes which taken away. So, so <laughs> he is Edisha. And here is Edisha in his stage costume. He had a men's choir, Mitiebi, and they would go out to sing like this. And Edisha has a wife, Nino. And Nino and Edisha have two children. They have Marika and Gigi. And they sing together in Edisha's children's choir, A Merry Merry. And those children in A Merry Merry, they just absorb the songs of their ancestors.
I'd like to propose a toast to teachers. All of those people who have led us down those winding roads of discovery and curiosity, whether it's in music or other places in our lives. To teachers. To, to teachers. teachers. If, I, if I could just explain. The, the, um, these young people are from two catchments, Bill Wells catchment and Dundumbry catchment. They're from all different primary school, schools. So we've not only got um, a mix of cultures from, from across the sea, but we've also got different primary schools mixing probably for the first time ever. I'm going to introduce you in a moment to, to uh, Shalva, who's handing out the copies. Shalva taught, taught these young people yesterday, and he's a teacher. And they haven't had a chance to, to, um, to rehearse this tonight, and we just need to make sure that they're in three groups. Um, group one, one, the high group. Middle voice is in the middle. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I, I've got a feeling that Amber and Mary are going to help them out. <laughs> now this, this piece, Osa Husa de Kembersa, and it's a, it's a Christmas song about December 25th, and I think the shower for that. to manhood. And he continues singing the songs with Mityebi, and he continues sharing the songs with a Merry Merry. And then Gigi marries Magda, and they have a son, Ilya. Hmm. We should sing a, a wedding song for, for Magda and Ooh, Gigi, yes. which do we know? 
Leaving Magda and Ilya alone with the songs. over the years. Now she leads a Merry Merry and those children, they are her life. to toast the health of all of our friends in Georgia, especially our friend Magda, because right now she's in Tbilisi with COVID-19. So let's sing a healing song for Magda um, to charm the spirits, the Batonebi, um, or the lords to leave and uh, leave her well. Nani nai bata nebo Nani nai bata nebo Nani Thank you. 
meal together and it was just great. Thank you to the hosts who hosted the party. Most people went in twos to, to various families around. I thank the, the young people who've been involved. I, th I think you can see that it's been a very special experience. Again, it's a fantastic concert tonight. And, and, I, and I'd really like to thank Gigi, who's the, the, the master of the choir, uh, and, and everybody here tonight. They've given us such a fantastic uh, insight into their culture their dance, their music, and, and their spirit, I think, is an absolutely paramount. I'd like to make a final toast to community, uh, to the communities that we form around music and singing and theatre, to the temporary communities we make in one evening at the theatre, and just the fact that we can all be in this room right now. Um, I'd like to toast to that. So, to community, to connection, to friendship, to our friends in Georgia. Muki sonsi nep sonsi nes mamali mukasa sonsi nep sonsi nes mamali mukasa. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma